Hi, this is John Antonakis, Professor of Organizational Behavior at the Faculty of Business and Economics, HSC Lausanne, at the University of Lausanne. So, millions of people around the world, and in particular in America, are asking who is going to win the presidency in November. Now, this is a million dollar question, and I don't have a crystal ball to tell you what's going to happen. Of course, everyone's making uh, predictions. There's Nate Silver's uh, blog. There's uh, Real Clear Politics, which is uh, putting together a whole bunch of polls. Uh, there's Huffington Post. Everyone is making predictions, but this is really one very uncertain situation. And we'll tell you what the model that Philippe Jacquard and I developed has to say. The model that uh, we have uh, was developed by um, Philippe Jacquard uh, and I, and it's based on a model um, that was developed by Raymond Fair, a professor of macroeconomics at Yale University. Let me first briefly explain Raymond Fair's model, and then I'll explain our model. So Raymond Fair mo Fair's model takes into account the state of the economy and incumbency. If the economy is doing well, the incumbent party is rewarded. If the economy is doing poorly, the incumbent party is punished. Being an incumbent provides an advantage if you're running for the second term. You are much more in the uh, media eye. The devil you know is better than the devil you don't, basically, put. Um, so that gives an advantage to an incumbent. However, if the incumbent party has been occupying the White House for two consecutive terms, in other words, eight years, well, they've overstayed their welcome, and that's where um, the populace would like to have a change. So typically speaking, um, after two terms in power, the incumbent party will lose. So we like this model. This model is probably one of the best econometric models to predict the um, US presidential elections, but it lacks one key ingredient, and that is the difference in perceived competence between the two candidates. And one aspect of leadership which is strongly associated with whether a leader is seen as competent is charisma. So what our model does says, okay, that's very nice. Let's build on the econometric model. We use the econometrics model to predict um, what should happen were the two candidates equal. And then what we do is we factor in who's more charismatic. And what we have observed is when the econometric model sends a very strong signal about the state of economy, charisma doesn't really matter. So if the economy is doing extremely well, then the incumbent party is going to be rewarded. If it's doing extremely poorly, the incumbent party is going to be punished. It's only when the signals from the economic model are really fuzzy where charisma factors in, and that's where our model adds a significant increment in making the um, econometric model much more accurate in prediction. So at this time, Raymond Fair has predicted that the Democrats should receive 44% of the two-party vote. When I mean two-party vote, we mean we exclude third parties, the Libertarian and the Green uh, candidates. So this suggests that the Republicans should win with about 56% of the two-party vote share. This is a pretty huge margin, uh, but let's see what feeds into it. The fact is that the Democrats have currently been occupying the White House for two terms. The state of the economy is not that great to justify uh, re-electing them. Hence, this model is spewing out a prediction um, that the Republicans uh, should win. So we have two very interesting candidates, Donald Trump on the one hand and Hillary Clinton on the other hand. Both of them are not that charismatic. So we measured their charisma by looking for what we call charismatic leadership tactics in the nomination acceptance speeches that they gave at the uh, Democratic and Republican conventions. According to our charismometer, what we found is that Hillary Clinton has 52% charisma, 52% meaning um, we, we looked at each sentence and we looked for the presence or absence of a charismatic tactic. So 52% of the time in the sentences she spoke, she used a charismatic tactic. And for Trump, it is a bit higher, 54%. So according to the charismatic component of the model, Clinton is at 52 and Trump is slightly higher at 54, but this difference isn't so big. And in fact, it will not factor in very much in the current election.
So we plugged in the numbers, we took the prediction of uh, Raymond Fair, and we interacted it with uh, our model, in other words, the charisma difference between the two candidates, and lo and behold, we come out with the same prediction. The Democrats should receive 44% of the two-party vote share, and the Republicans, 56%. So this is a very particular election. So we know from the leadership literature and there are lots of theories and empirical results that show that women are held to a higher standard when they are evaluated for position of power. So everyone knows that Hillary Clinton is very competent. Um, on the other hand, she seems a bit cold and distant. So people are ambivalent about her and are holding her to a very high standard. There's also issues about her, her how honest she is and how truthful she is and how trustworthy she is. On the other hand, we, we have Trump, who's seen as capricious and, and irrational and, and unpredictable. So, so this election is really a weird election. So although I did make a prediction before, the specificities of this election, the idiosyncrasies that I had hand in determining what is happening right now are really creating a lot of flux and uh, therefore it makes it very hard to know with certitude uh, who is going to win. If this election was a normal conventional election, I would be standing up here and I would be saying I am really sure about our forecast. But because we haven't factored in a woman running and a highly unconventional candidate running, I am not that sure. However, the model says what it says. Anything can happen between now and November. Scandals can break out, the economy could tank, there could be a huge terrorist attack, God forbid. But whatever happens, happens, and we will see in November uh, whether our model is right or wrong.